That was good. Okay. All right, everybody. So welcome to our July 3rd meeting for open source ecology. We do have a couple of guests today. We've got Spencer and Michelle from Spencer is from actually from Chicago. He right. You're from Chicago and he's looking at doing some collaborative work yep. there on some electronics, power electronics. So we'll let him talk about that. And then Michelle also uh, collaboration from OSC Germany, uh, the German side on an open open source charge controller and other electronics for, for power. So I'd like to bring everybody's attention to the meeting agenda there. So pretty much type in our notes and follow the general order there. So I'm posting that into the chats for everyone to, to get in there. Feel free to take notes. We do need a note taker. I don't believe Jen is here. So uh, who can take, let's see, can somebody take notes? Um, let's see. Ruslan, would you mind taking notes today? Okay. Okay, yeah, if you can just capture the main points on the notes page. And also for anyone who has questions, please do write them on, on the questions page. So... Okay, so main main events happening at Open Source Ecology. So the continuing preparation for the immersion training program. That's the big thing for this year in terms of getting getting more people involved in the project full time. So basically training people to to do what we do, which is running workshops. And that's that's what we're doing as our current revenue model. We don't have funding from foundations. We're largely bootstrap there's a little bit of uh, funding still coming in from i do have uh, about a hundred or so true fans that are still still contributing to the project and which is something they started that was back you know, almost probably in like 2010 or so also uh, a good number of years on the true fans but the thing the way we can make this grow is by workshops and that's what we're we're aiming for training people for the immersion program uh, sign up deadline for the actual full immersion applications for that are due on August 1st so anyone who wants to is watching this and wants to participate in that idea is is that whatever we do here we are open teaching everybody exactly how to do that to generate revenue is one of the main things in doing any any project is considering the def difference between a project and actually a product so so if you have some kind of a product you can you can uh, generate revenue for it from it an idea is that um basically at this point we're getting we're getting to the point of uh, being in a position to train others and and have people run workshops in different locations so this weekend actually we're running the the cnc circuit mill workshop i'll actually um, put in a slide on that. Uh, let me go back. CNC circuit mill workshop OSC. Just want to paste that into the chat box. Um, Harrison, if you can paste that into the notes there. But that's coming up this this weekend. Uh, actually, a three day workshop building the open source ecology cnc circuit mill which is basically identical to the printer except with a router head and we've proven it well enough actually shane who's who's hosting that workshop with me he actually included that in his master's thesis so he's gonna be publishing more info on that um, as a vehicle product that we think we have right now for making circuits very high resolutions like 0.1 millimeter resolution which is very very good so we can print pretty decent mill pretty decent circuits with it so that's that's pretty good coming up this weekend we're gonna build probably two of them uh, and learn a lot about electronics the mill a couple of sample devices and basically prove out further develop a CNC mill towards a complete package, complete product package. So that's that's a big one. 
Back at home here, I'm continuing work on uh, I'm just building more printers, kind of shaking down new things so you can uh, see on slide six. That's what it, it looks like right now. Uh, I built another one here. So basically proving out uh, more details on it, uh, improving the, the print head, uh, mounting the new electronics assembly on that. Uh, just making slight improvements towards really high product, um, high quality product. You can see the universal axis as you see it in a picture. All the axes are identical, so really focusing on, on the absolute minimum parts count and simplicity of build. Uh, I timed the, the build time for each axis, so now that I'm quite experienced with it, it takes me 15 minutes to build one axis completely from scratch, from the raw parts, from the 3D prints, from uh, the bolt and, and individual components, assembling that completely from scratch parts. When I say scratch parts, that means things you can get readily off the shelf. Uh, so 15 minutes, there's five axes, two, four, five uh, moving axes. That means uh, about an hour under an hour and a half more like an hour 15 minutes for a skilled person to build the complete axis assembly including mounting that if you have the frame so the frame has got the bolt together construction and yeah that's that's quite uh, I must say it's quite pleasing to see how it's uh, it's relatively simple and still like in the build process refining some of the details like what is the correct procedure how do we make it easier for, for it to be totally foolproof? Uh, and one thing that I'm doing right now, before there was something that nobody could get right, which is like, how do you orient the axis? Because it matters whether the, like if you see, uh, zoom in here, but it, yeah, actually let me, uh, let me share my screen for everybody. So you can see what I'm looking at. Um, I'm gonna zoom in here. So that's on one of the axes. Uh, you see the belt holding peg. It can be on the right hand or left hand side. During former builds, what we learned is that if people didn't, we wanted to have it such that you get it right so that the motion is correct. And right now, just one simple modification is I'm not worrying about that being correct in mechanical, but the way you plug in the, the stepper motor to the controller that controls the proper direction so that's much easier to modify than having to if you get it wrong to remove the axis from the machine so just little details of simplification that make it all work well uh, so that's that's happening cnc circuit mill workshop the last thing i want to just bring about is uh on the, the tractor the micro tractor now uh, there's going to be some forward motion on that in a sense that uh, the German guys, uh, where I went uh, at the University of um, Helmut Schmidt University in Hamburg, uh, so they actually inviting me to get some funding for a, uh, a Tun Tunisia project where they're inviting me to build the actual tractor. So what I proposed to them is we, we build the tractor without loader, but with remote control. So that's coming up for Tunisia sometime early 2019 that's great because that will allow us to replicate the tractor i mean we prototype it again and actually make some additions like remote control which we have already done but we haven't tested that with the tractor yet so there's be going to be a little bit of improvement there in terms of forward motion but that's that's a pretty exciting project uh that will be done for for basically up to 20 students probably at a university at, at somewhere in Tunis. I don't know much detail more than that, but just had the initial conversation on that, which is quite exciting uh, because we probably will end up, if we don't know if they have access to CNC cutting of metal, but if they do, that would be a great replication of a tractor. And it's, it's kind of cool that you can build that all in a period. The workshop will altogether will be five days. So it's cool to see that you can get a bunch of uh, newbies or inexperienced people and have them build guide them in building that in under a week so i mean probably more like two days for the mechanical probably two days for the electrical parts and there we go so that is a pretty good pace of 
uh, of build because of the way we build it and the modularity involved. So that's about it on my side, I think. Um, so I'd like to hear then from now Michelle. Then. Um, so can you chime in to yeah. us on, so what we'd like to find out is what exactly is the status of the the charge controller and the electronics work that's being done in in OSC Germany side. Um, so yeah, if you can if you can take us through that, the idea for OSC is we have an off-grid seed eco home that you might have seen, and in it we have three kilowatts of photovoltaics. We use off-the-shelf chargers right now with lead acid batteries but uh, we'd like to of course as time goes on to get all the open source power electronics there and that's part of the global village construction set we have the universal power supply is what the relevant project within the global village construction set is um, and that power supply actually applies to other things like your induction furnace welders inverters charge charge systems for like windmills on a larger scale and the way we think about it is modularity as always scalable in units of one or ten kilowatts so so then you know if it's scalable at 10 kilowatts we can be talking about okay we can do a system that's a hundred kilowatts and when we say the global village we typically think about a 200 kilowatt scale or around let's say 200 horsepower 200 kilowatts scale that's the current claim of what we're trying to prove as sufficiency for a modern economy that gets up to all the industrial features of modern civilization so um, the scalability gets us there because if we can do a smaller system like one or one units of one kilowatt or units of 10 kilowatts then we can scale that we design everything for scalability with that said, let's uh, let's hear a little bit more about uh, the Germany the work on the power electronics. Let's, let's actually get a slide in there for that. So, Michelle, can you take over? Okay. You, you can hear me, everyone? Uh, you're rather soft. Can you speak up, maybe? A little bit up? Okay. No, it's better. I don't know. Yeah, that, that sounds better. Go ahead. Okay. So maybe I will just also share um, my explorer or yeah. yeah just show you the, the website and with this I can explain a little bit more because yeah, here the, the organizational structure is a little bit yeah, um, different not all in the open source of Germany so especially the solar charger is part of um, the project but it's like yeah one man Martin Jäger the main developer he's doing it and he's not um, explicitly part of the open source ecology Germany. Right. Just for, um, yeah, but. So. And you're, you're located in Hamburg? I'm located in Hamburg, yes. And so are you now? I hope you can see it. Yeah, tell me a little bit more. Are you at the university, or tell me a little more about yourself? Yeah, right. So from my side, I'm at the university. I'm in my master now in automation systems. Uh huh. And yeah, I'm. And for this, I found your organization. It's called the Hamburg Open Online University, and they are doing like um, uh, projects in open educational resources. So OER. Yeah. So um, this was the yeah, initial for me to um, found a group called Collective Open Source Hardware, so Cousin Usar, and I wanted to do some open source hardware project in the field of university or scientific field. So this was the initial um, part of this. And here I found Martin Jäger, the main developer of the Libris Lab project. So this is the solar charger, the open source solar charger. And with him together and with the open source ecology Germany, um, we build it up a solar box, so the a solar box, so it's just like a yeah, power bank, the electrical component of the open source solar charger. So this is a, the main project behind it, and we also wanted to provide, or we are providing like um, open educational resources, so for the assembly of the open source software projects, so how to reproduce them. 
so also um, our approach is to do it for, for newbies, for people who don't have this um, knowledge. And therefore, we are um, providing this open educational resource. And the first step is now the PCB production. So how to produce the PCB. So as you said, you, you are doing a workshop with a, um, a PCB mill. This would be also, I think, a great um, possibility to cooperate and to do some um, collaboration in this field. Yes, yeah, so um, for your questions now for the solar charger, I don't know if you see my screen, you see the website yes. of the Libra Solar? Okay, perfect. Yes. So um, this is the, the project of it, and it's um, it's like two main parts. It's one is it's a charge controller, so it's in PPP charge controller. So it's not just um, a MOSFET, the H-bridge MOSFET inside of it. So you can use it from the hardware side as a boost and as a bug converter. So you can step down, you can step up the voltage level. So a PCB is a computer. And it's just like the software you have to change to get um, uh, one function or another function. So this is also the, I think, the modularity behind it. You just have to change the software and then you can use it the other way around. Um, huh. as it Hold on. Is can, hold on. Can, I, can I ask you about that? So does that mean between a boost and bug converter function here? So you're saying that is the circuit identical so it's made it would make such that like, if you did an individual step down versus step up would the components be different or no, it's like on components like you have four MOSFETs for it so it's a called h bridge mm -hmm. so half of in german h bridge yep. and therefore you can use it it's like for like for motor motor inverter or like inverter general like you have and then it's the it's it's the same password, so it's form steps inside. That's good because then so you can use modify the software to get the different functionality. That's it, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yes, and um, for now for the for the power, it's like this charge controller now, it's up to three hundred watt peak you can connect here. Uh huh. On this on this one charge controller. And on the output, um, you can have a 12 volt battery level or a 24 volt battery level. So it's up to 24 volt. And the input voltage level is 44, uh, sorry, 55 volt. Yeah. Up to 55. Can you do, for example, like if you have a 12 volt battery system, can you actually use that to charge 24 volt batteries? Sorry again. If you have if you have 12 volt battery, uh, 12 volt fo PV panels, can you charge 24 volt batteries? Yes, you can. So it's like the, the other way around. You boost it up. Yeah. Wow. But I don't think I don't think it. it may, yeah, you don't have a 12 volt PV panel, but maybe a 12 volt DC generator. So if yeah. for example, for little windmills, and then with this you can. Um, you can charge up to 24, 24. That's excellent. Because typically, the things you get off the shelf, like a, a standard commercial MPPT controller, does that also allow you to step up or only step down? Typically, it's only step know. down, right? Yeah, I think, I don't know. At least the one I have, I believe it's it can only go down it can, if it's not above yeah, because it's a solar charger and right. the solar you have a, yeah. it's the input voltage level higher than the output right no that's great that's great mm -hmm. so here now you see the um, system layer maybe i can also um, explain it a little bit from here so this is the solar box system layer but this is also just scalable and yeah the system is the same, just the frame behind it. So we, we call it now the solar box because we wanted to have a portable box. But the system layer, you can scale it up. And yeah, so here's the MPPT. And now this is the solar charger, which you can um, directly connect to acid, uh, acid lead batteries, right? And now it's also the second component of the Libre Solar project is the battery management system. And this is for if you're using Lime. Um, so now we got lion um, iron phosphate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so lithium batteries. Lithium batteries, right. So and then, the, so the MPPT part gets you to lead acid batteries, and then BMS gets you to lithium batteries. Yes. yes. Excellent. But for now, 
but for now we did test if you can have um, yeah lead acid and like um, lithium acid batteries because the BMS just got switched so it's not the DC DC um, converter here in the BMS so that you can um, I say to encode so that you don't have the same voltage level here as here. For now, it's directly so the battery voltage level is a grid. Find it now. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. also. You know what I mean? So now the battery voltage level is always the grid voltage level. So if you want to connect any other loads, it's depending on, on the voltage level. Um, yeah. Quality. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. So from the power, like I said, 300 watt, but now I'm doing also my master thesis behind it that we want to interconnect more of these components so that we can scale it up and then that we have little energy management behind it so that each component knows what the other one needs because we got here a communication interface based on CAN bus. So hardware, it's, it's a CAN bus interface here on the, on the hardware. And we got also a gateway behind it so that we can um, transfer the CAN data into Wi-Fi. So we got a little Raspberry Zero. For now, you can also use the ESP, anything just to get um, the data via Wi-Fi. And then there's the Open Hardware project. I don't know if you know the Open Energy Monitor. And we are using this for visualization. For, for the... uh -huh. Open Energy Monitor. Who does, who's doing that? Is that... From Germany, or? I think it's no, it's someone in Britain. Oh, wait a minute, I had it open. Yeah. Open. They're also doing great jobs so behind it. They're also providing some learning, some resources. So, this is this. so they're providing like uh, measuring hardware, measuring and here the, the visualization system behind. This is this so that what, what we are? Yes. Yeah, is that fully open source there? They've got the hardware is fully open source. So I get it, yeah. so and you guys actually replicated it? it? You bought it? The hardware, not no. We we use the software. So we, because we got we got measurement system on the hardware here. So for measuring the voltage and the current, there are measurement components here in the hardware. So we don't need the hardware from the open energy monitor, but we use the software for the visualization. Okay. Yeah, so server and yeah, the visualization application. Yeah. Yes, so this is roughly <laughs> the thing behind it. And as I said, we are doing it here right really for open educational resources. I think this is the the main possibility to get into the scientific or to get into the university field because then also the professors and the students uh, get maybe more attracted to this project. And yes, yeah, also the regenerative systems. For now, it's really yeah, on the focus. So, so we yeah. try really to provide here the workshop um, slides. Yeah, as you see it also, I think to see it here, maybe I can show. I don't know how how much time. If you want to see it, or you can just see it on the. If you if I, if I share the link, you can watch over. Yeah. The, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us a little more. Okay, okay. Yeah, so for this is the open education, like I said, so we're here just a little bit more energy system in general, what are what, what our energy systems, so to get, um, how to say, the consciousness behind it, just the consciousness, so the people know a little bit more, okay, the track into this, um, uh, into this topic than the Liposola in general, and here is the um, step by step that we want to provide. So for building up PCBs based on SMD. Can you type it? Can, can you please type that into the chat box? Because my screen is not updating. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got the link. Okay. So just just as a prerequisite here, a uh, question here. So you're actually recommending that people replicate this module fully? Like what part of it has been well tested versus in, um, you know, in development? Mm, so we're providing now here the reproduction of the PCB, but we know that not everyone wants to yeah, do this because PCB production based on SD is really 
Yeah, difficult also. But we want to show because it's open source. So we just want to show that it, it is possible if you want to do it. And we also show the, um, yeah, the, 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 the open, how to say, like the Fab Labs and the open workshops you can you can use for this so that you can you do it by yourself. And yeah, we got a disclaimer here because we are not providing any, um, how to say, any currency or something like this. So the PCBs are tested. So the PCBs are also in use. So Martin Yeager, who developed it, um, uh, not sold it, but gave it to some people who wanted to because it's using also on a boat and on a little um, caravan, things like this. So, and he knows what he's doing because he's also working in the um, battery development for um, vehicles, for electrical vehicles, the testing vehicles. So, yeah, the PCBs are tested by so far. We got a, we got a problem, so we tested it in our university for the, I call, um, Electric magnetic ESD. So um, the CE um, certification that you need if you if you provide PCBs, electrical parts in general. And for this, there's a little so the, the the value is a little bit too high, but not it's too high for for getting the certification, but not too high that it's I'd say dangerous. But Are you actually pursuing the CE certification? certification? Yeah, I want to pursue it, yes. Okay. Tell me more about the productization of it. So are you looking to actually sell KISS and make business out of this? I don't know so far. I said so Martin here is the main developer. I think he wants to live from it because he's doing really yeah, a lot of development. But it's, I don't know, the business more behind it. But I think it's just like getting on for food and it's really like everyone. So maybe in this direction, but like I said, that's that's Martin Jäger. For me now, not no. It's just like to get the open hardware into universities and to get also students with it, so that students see what is possible. Because if I am studying here electrical system, I've never built up PCBs, so this was the first time. Just because I I saw that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Right. So tell me just a little bit more about which role you have versus versus Martin Jaeger. You're so you're working in this project. So, so the Libre Solar project is fully from Martin Jaeger. So if you see this one here, so the Libre Solar is his development. Uh -huh. Please he also a little bit about him. You can read from him. And, and I was doing this um, Cosinus Harder, the collective open source hardware. So the, the yeah, community group here now based in Hamburg. It's also like um, uh, with the open source ecology, so we want it to be a regional group of it, but like independent, just like a yeah, distributed community for building up just in general a community with open source, especially open source hardware. So this was the main um, reason for my side. So I'm the founder of this collective open source hardware, and Martin Jaeger is the founder of the Libre Solar project. Yeah, okay. Yes. So for your questions, yeah. So like scale to scale it up, you can. I would suggest maybe because you said you got a PCB circuit mill. <laughs> maybe if you are interested to rebuild this PCB, because we showed how to how to put together uh, parts with a ready um, a PC, so a ready printed PCB. So we bought the ready printed PCB, but we put it together with the electrical components like resistor and capacitor. So your project part would be the first step, our would be the second step, and then we are doing now the third project for building it up to a system. So like connecting batteries with it, connecting solar panels with it, so that you have really a really a ready to use decentralized energy system. Okay. And here's a here's a question for you then. So we like to approach the philosophy of saying, okay, whatever components whatever however you can simplify things by putting it as much on the software and microcontroller side so that the electrical components are minimum like for example instead of designing circuit uh, with components put that into code uh, and use the maximum fu functionality of the microcontroller and when you looked at the design it seemed like uh seemed like you're not really doing that 
and, and I wanted to ask you what is um, or what's the rationale? How are you thinking behind your thinking behind it so that um, you enable more of the DIY manufacturability, like with CNC circuit mills? For so if somebody doesn't have access to the stencils and the more advanced way of doing it, can we simplify the structure so it's easily printable? With a CNC circuit mill or mobile with a CNC circuit mill, and then as much of it go on on the microcontroller side, so you you're using the uh, basically information information age components, which are microcontrollers, to displace as many of the discrete components as possible. Does that does that make any sense? So you mean like to get more on the software to to be, to be like more flexible, just changing the software to get the simplify the hardware. To simplify the electrical components amount. Yeah, use more functionality of the microcontroller yeah. because it's yeah. easier to modify so software than yeah. to make things with hardware. Yeah, I understand. So by now this design here, you're right, so it's completely full of huge features. So this was also the main reason behind it, as far as I understand Martin Jäger, because he wanted just to show how much you can get by yourself. But right, it's, it's really complex. For now, he's also developing, I don't know when he will get out, um, a simplified charge controller, especially for um, a developing country. So to get just like an UCB output to have um, a, a little less power. So I don't know if, if we get the, the right requirements of, um, a pro of the production of the PCB. So how to develop it, I think we can get it into the developing loop. So that we need the requirements behind it because for right now, it's just for us, we can get the, the, CP, the PCP printed in any way we want it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's right. So what are the, like the discussion, like, do you have a, you know, what's your method of communication and, and form or something like, how do you guys communicate both for Libre Solar and... Yeah, so developing by now is, is everything that's in GitHub. So it's... Uh -huh. Here the, the Libre Solar is on GitHub and our cousin is also on GitHub. We are now doing it with Open Source Ecology Germany. They're providing a Git T. It's also Git based, but um, self hosted Git um, platform. Uh -huh. and, yep. and with the, the cousin is we want to change to the Git T. And the yeah, Libre Solar is independent. I don't know if Montenegro wants to do it or not. But yeah, we are, we are, the development is Git based. And the communication is yeah, tele Telegram. Because now here in, in, in Hamburg, it was like maybe, yeah, let's say, six, seven people who were really, who were really doing something. Um, Would you say Telegram? Telegram, yes. <laughs> uh, telegram as in, sh show me that. Can you send the links? Tele I haven't used Telegram. Is that some kind of an animal? Telegram Messenger? Oh, so Telegram, you, you, Telegram, you don't know Telegram? Yeah. No, not, I haven't used it. Uh, is that popular uh, in Germany? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I can say maybe Europe, Germany, yeah. I sent you the link. Did anyone on the US team reuse Telegram? I never used it. <laughs> I, I think it's not the best so in the case of security and everything else, but it's a pragmatic one because I got the people in here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just quick communication is still there. And uh, so we we try everything to do on, on, on GitHub. So okay. Right Can you uh, send type in a link for your Telegram group? Or how do we find that? We find your group on there. Yeah, I can send you a link. On that. Yeah. Can talk to me like for the co for Cosmos Hub group, so the the Cosmos H, sorry, Cosmos H, so the collective open source Hub group yep. is a current right now, so it's a community in Hamburg. Okay, yeah, I'm just uh, thinking about how we can uh, improve the communication lines. Yeah, um, right. Okay, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if um, if we can collaborate maybe on a CC milled version, maybe like for a developing world or or the. Our goal is to try to simplify the tool sets so that you can still attain the same functionality, but without the more advanced tool chains. So, uh, like the CNC circuit would be a more, more accessible tool chain. If that yeah, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, and maybe just if, 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 if you're interested, like you said, for building up the energy system, this would also be good if you, to, to, to get the loop into it for like building up a nano grid. So this would be the, the, the main idea behind it. So open nano grid system. And yeah, also all the all the power supply um, modules you are developing to, to try to get in one grid and to get one, yeah. one stable grid. System. Yeah, definitely. And when you say the micro grid, is that your focus or is that Martin? No, it's like, yeah, also my focus, like nano grid, micro grid, so because of my master thesis. And I think this is also the only way to, to get the scalable, the scalable functionality behind it, because yeah, the PCBs has uh, got a limit, a power limit. And yeah, for this one, we need to scale it up. And also the communication behind it to get a standard communication behind it. So Martin's um, um, development right now is also to get uh, an open energy protocol. So we like yeah, a protocol for open source based energy systems. I don't know if someone is doing something in this direction. If you know someone, also please tell us. But no, we don't. I don't. I was going to ask you, who, are there any other groups working on open source hardware microgrids? Do you know any other groups? Or you guys are like the only guys doing that right now? I don't know. I, I did some research. I think like the open energy monitor is also like yeah, in the field of system. Yeah, so that you would also be a, a open energy association behind it. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's, that's a big, big uh, picture. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. We should talk about that. Let's you know. Let's start discussion around that. See what the framework would look like. It'll be good. Okay. Yeah. Um, as is, do you rep recommend the? If you want to replicate this with the CNC circuit mill, uh, how would you suggest we do it? Do we want to build one of yours just as it is right now and maybe test it or? Just, just would be, so if, yeah, you can see how, how it is right now. You can see if you could print it, or if you could develop the, the, the circuit or not. And if not, to give up the requirements to change it. Okay. And what's it, if we want to get a ready board, can, do you guys sell them, the, the PCB? I have, I, have, I have to talk with Martin, but we got, uh, we got uh, also a PCB circuit, I call production here. But also, I'm like doing program of profits, but benefits for open source hardware. So we want also to push the open source hardware community behind it. And with them, I think he's trying to... Because always the problem if you just um, buying one PCB circuit, you know, the price is much higher than if you buy 50. So this is always the, the problem. Yeah. So for now, there's no shop or any anything behind it. Mm -hmm. so going, yeah. Would you guys be able to make make one for us? I think for MPP, the MPPT, I think there's one left. So I, I can I can ask Martin. If you're interested, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would be great to just start replacing. Uh, I don't know if you've seen our off-grid power system for the Seiko Home, but if you can start snapping out those proprietary components and putting in the open source ones, that would be a very attractive value proposition for the world. Yeah. But you, you, it's, it's, all, it's everything open source. You can. In general, you can also build up in the U.S. if you know a PCB circuit producer. Right. right. But know. then, um, yeah. And what about the populating the board? Is that all doable by hand, or you have to have? I mean, you have to have the stencil and all that, right? Yeah. No. There's also production who got a pick and place machine, so you need someone who got a yeah. pick and place machine, so it give you the fully, the fully. Or we can take board. a look at what it would look like oh we can send you one or we can send you one that was just... <laughs> yeah yeah let's see what's possible but definitely we'd want to go into the route of saying okay let's let's redesign this for circuit millability and possibly the the, the simplification by logic of removing the physical components and putting as much of the functionality onto the microprocessor microcontroller yeah. as possible yes because the circuit i mean it's very basic you got 
you got some MOSFETs and some gate drivers, and you get the fast signals from from a microcontroller. And so then you get but we are also trying to to, to put more functionality. So by now oh, there is a lot of functionality behind it because yeah. also the, the communication functionality, right. and like I said, just the, the MOSFET um, control. So this is everything in it. So, but yeah, you have to reduce a little bit, like the can communication. There are some um, ICs you have to buy. You have to buy. So if you don't want the can communication, you can let them away. So yeah. So if you also you can you can send the requirements like you said, like for yeah. In general. And then we okay. Well, that's great. Um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely something. I mean, we can we can definitely start using this right now and seeing seeing what um what improvements or what what modifications need to be made for the scalability and and ease of manufacture then yeah okay excellent well i think that 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 does that um anything else anything else you'd like to wrap up with or did you communicate all that you I wanted to say or yeah I think at this time yes okay so I really like to yeah to be with in the collaboration field I can say some general thing but yeah, I think you know it. everyone got the limited time you can get yeah projects, yeah I mean but we want to see also this this process behind it and this process is just peu a peu, so a little bit a little bit constantly and yeah uh, yeah, that's why we're, we're, you know, we're trying to go the route of, okay, so anything that we do that's ready to be productized, uh, that an opportunity where somebody can actually take that and prize and run with it so there's good energy behind it and it's self-funding. And the idea behind that is we also make the business side completely open source, so it's, that's a distributive enterprise. But there's definitely different people around the world that make money from it or, or run enterprises. So it's actually continuous development that's fully open source and so forth. So um, I don't think there's any good example of such an enterprise right now. Like the 3D printer perhaps is the closest, but none of the companies are actually trying to promote the replication of their business by others. Like, for example, Prusa doesn't try to start up another Prusa company elsewhere we're trying we are trying to do that we're saying okay let's let's develop the full business model uh, enterprise case and then teach people how to do that so that there is an act of development effort that's self-funded through the the products so um, that's the general idea there's a lot of work to do on that okay Okay, well, Michelle, so thank you. Thank you for your feedback here. And then let's thank continue you. the the meeting. And we'll continue on communications on the internet. We'll follow up. Uh, so let's maybe hear from Spencer. So Spencer is also a guest online today with us. So Spencer, would you mind filling us in more? What So in Chicago, what's what, what are you interested in doing there? Tell us more. Yeah, Matt Spencer, you gotta unmute yourself. You muted out if, if you're trying to speak. Oh, uh, Spencer. Yes, yeah, Spencer. <clears throat> no, I can't hear for some reason. Uh, can you try something else like. Uh, still can't hear yet. Anyone else hear Spencer? No, we can't hear you. Um, can you just like maybe like refresh the browser? No, just refresh the browser see if you if the voice comes in. Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna pause the camera for a second. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I recently started going to a thing called Shy Hat Night. Um, first of all, hello, my name is Spencer Nealon. Um, uh, I'm an electrical engineer. I do embedded systems. 
Uh, I work at a retail analytics company called ShopTrack, uh, and I've been interested in open sourcing costing for a long time, and I want to see if I can help by getting the group together here in Chicago. Um, so Shy Hack, they, they, it's just kind of a, they, they meet every week on Tuesdays. Anybody can come and join. Uh, they'll have a presentation at the beginning over a random topic. It's all about like social good and civic technology to help cities and communities. Um, but anybody can start a group. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then afterwards they'll just have work groups for the rest of the night. So I thought it was a good opportunity to see if we can make an open source Kelsey group and um, depending on what people I, and what talent I can gather into it, um, what projects I can work on. Um, as far as myself, I am interested in helping with power electronics. I um, at one point designed a Tesla coil, which is a fun project. Um, uh, induction furnace is similar circuitry, just a big power burner. Um, so, but I, I, any way I can help. So it, it's, I'm, I'm going to be starting in the group in August since I'm going to Europe for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll see where it takes me from there. Yeah. How many people show up to the shy? Hack night in Chicago, physical event. It's usually 40, 50 people, uh, and there'll be a presentation at the beginning, and then they'll break up into groups, uh, except uh, it's uh, downtown. There, it's, it's at a place called um, the Merchandise Mart. Um, mm -hmm. So it's this big open space. I think they're, they're using headquarters of a company called Braintree, Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about it yeah. or if you're interested, uh, in, in like getting involved while I start this group going to get a little momentum, yeah. uh, I was thinking potentially what I could do, uh, if we need a, a, a working space would be to go to, um, a maker space or some place like we were some place where there's actual equipment. Um, I know a few places in the city that I could potentially go to. So you saying that you would, you would uh, have this group that you'd meet at, maybe do like the design work at the try hack night and then right. have a group at a physical space as well, doing actual prototyping. Yeah. 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 So, so, so can you commit to the, I mean, does the production first project uh, make sense to you or would that be fun for you? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, I am, I'm familiar, so familiar, I think, with the requirements. Uh, but um, and I have a bachelor's degree level education in our electronics, so I wouldn't necessarily have all the expertise to design it. Mm -hmm. um, so, it but it, so it really depends on which people we can get to help us. You know, it depends on the resources. Um, right. So. Yeah. Um, and one of those simple zero voltage crossing power supplies that you can get on Amazon, for, let me type in a link, $40. Yeah, you know, I thought that. Yeah. What do you think of that? I mean, is that scalable to much higher power by, by enlarging components? Or, um, or maybe like say to a couple of kilowatts or 10 kilowatts. Can, can you scale to say to 10, 10 kilowatts? So what I know about um, induction furnaces is that they usually have these big capacitor banks in them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if those, like they're like the size of a cabinet. Um, right, because you're it's it's the opposite end of a resonant tank circuit. I don't know exactly how those scale uh, with larger power. Mm -hmm. So that would be something worth finding out. Yeah, do you have any familiarity with how you actually track the 
because I is, doesn't it work like that you turn on the appropriate capacitance uh, depending on load, like like it actually follows the load. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah, it, it does, and as well as the load changes as it heats up. So the metal in the middle is functioning as the core to the conductor. So the inductance and resistance change uh, with temperature curve. Right. Uh, do you know how they actually track that? Like, they, how do they follow it? Do they actually end up turning on banks of the capacitors? You know, I'm not sure. I haven't yeah, got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's something like we can do. Well, we you know what we can do is do a dumb, like a really dumb supply that you can say it's like 10 kilowatts, but it would not follow the load and it would be very inefficient. But maybe that's right. a, maybe like in a, in a prototyping plan, that could be the way to go. First, we say, oh, okay, we can make this, uh, scale this to any power. Now it won't be really efficient, uh, but would it work? Uh, and then we go on to the, okay, add the load following feature such that we can uh, actually make it highly functional. That could be one way to go. But we can... Yeah. Maybe... Um, Maybe what we can have you do, can you maybe like start looking into this and, and come up with a kind of a prototyping plan as far as what you would see would make make sense? And we, we could say, um, I would say the like if we go all out to this project, I mean, we can say, okay, the first phase is do a very small circuit like, like this one that goes up to a kilowatt. And then we can say, okay, now we're getting to some serious power modules of 10 kilowatts and can we scale them? Um, so maybe come up with a prototyping plan, how you would go about that, and how we can go from one to the next. So we're maximizing like the common use of components, uh, basically uh, do modular design on this. So we can scale it, modular scalable design as much as possible. And of course, uh, hopefully with something like an Arduino, I would just go for Arduino, if possible, or a very popular Arduino should be able to do it. Um, as far as I, I know, but we, we, you know, we'll test the assumption, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that the circuit you have there is a, it's a flyback driver, and I found, um, uh, and you have a simulation of that, that there's a design online for it. It's all using passive components. Um, there's no electronics involved. Right. There's no certain, there's no microelectronics involved. Um, so in a larger reduction furnace, I can just tell you all that, that you wouldn't be driving the coil directly. You would be putting inductors to separate it. I'm sorry, you'd be putting a little transformer uh, around each arm of the current, of the, whatever that's called, the coil, I guess, the heating element. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, can you maybe like think about a, you know, a prototyping plan for how to go from the small scale to the larger scale? Can you maybe work on that a little bit? Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Couple yeah, yeah. I mean, if uh, you have a group of people working on it, then we can uh, contribute the knowledge that we have. Shane is doing a circuit mill. He knows some decent power electronics. Um, yeah. And we can we can continue on that, but yeah, yeah, and we can help. Are there any groups working on it? No, I mean not not that I know right now. There's nobody that I'm aware of that's doing any work on this. But it would be good to you know start with the basics. Okay, here's some resources on design of like is there a, what's the best book out there on induction furnace power supplies? You know, start with that and read up some of that. Document best learnings. Ideally, we want to find just go to one of the companies that do this or or pull out our subject matter or just look at um, try to find somebody at a university that does work on on induction furnaces and see if they would be willing to be an advisor. That would be the proper thing to do if we want to get proper guidance as well. But, yeah, but if I can give me search people groups that are working on this, like say in the states or the universities, 
uh, they can just reach out to them and say, hey, hey guys, we're starting this project. Uh, can you advise us? You know, sign, you know, give us like an hour of your time every month or something. We can go forward on that. Yep. Get, get some decent guidance yeah, on that, that, reinventing the wheel. That's the general idea. Yep. Okay. Well, um, that sounds good. So yeah, we'll we'll let, we'll continue discussing on that, and you know, see see what you can do on wrangling together the Chicago group. And it also looks like in October I'll I'll be going to Chicago. We're, we'll we'll run a 3D printer workshop in Chicago, uh, tentatively scheduled for October. So we can also meet there. Maybe we can do something together when when we're doing this uh, the 3D printer build. But it'll be a chance to meet. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And hopefully we'll have proof by that. Yeah. I'm sure people are interested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Sounds good. Do you have enough liberty from your, your current work that you can contribute some to this or you're pretty busy at work or uh yeah, I mean I have a full time job. But yeah. um I I mean it, it's something where if I can make the right arrangements for myself, um, then I can do it. Know, it's right downtown, right after work, things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it could be a good way to build some community around around the project. Okay. Yeah, there's not much of a um, hacker community in Chicago. I'm really passionate about creating that as well. Yeah. Um, okay. That sounds that sounds good. Well, Spencer, thanks. Let's move on. Keep moving here. So, welcome to you know to what OSC does. Hopefully we can collaborate more on this. Uh, okay, so let's go on to, so we have Ruslan and, and Eric still. Uh, do you guys have any updates or that you'd like to share? That's Eric, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Eric. Hi. Uh, so I've been uh, working on the KeyCAD to uh, FreeCAD um, toolchain. Yeah. Um, so it looks like there is a workbench um, that uh, has decent reviews, and um, I uh, started running it on OSC Linux. Um, so nice. it uh, opens up just fine, seems to integrate. Um, I am trying to get some familiarity, um, but the next step is to be able to bring in um, the models of the individual parts that you have put on the board. Okay. Um, so I haven't quite figured that out. Uh, but that's the next step. Um, and then, Let me ask you, I got a question for you. You said OSC Linux. Are you doing a live version or did you install OSC Linux? I ended up um, installing it. Okay, right, right. Okay, great. Uh, so, so I will put together a little tutorial, maybe a video of it um, for the installation. Um, I've just been able to open up, you know, uh, PCB files from KeyCAD, uh, and they look very nice, but I haven't been able to modify them in the, the free cat yet. Mm -hmm. um, but the project I was going to uh, kind of use this on was uh, to build up the 3D uh, model, the cab assembly of the CNC servo. Yeah, yep. So um, I guess we would need to have the uh, Arduino with the wraps uh, boards on them mm -hmm. um, if we want to go start detailed. So um, I'm playing around with that, trying to click together those models Yeah. and determine how to assemble. Um, and then just uh, that kind of led me to the thought of, well, how do we mount this on the D3D frame? Yeah. Um, and I see in the documentation there's those uh, metal cases that you were using um, versus Shane's build. Seems like it's not really mounted. Right. Um, so that's something we can discuss. Yeah. And as you see, um, let's see, let me paste in a picture. Here, the, the basic plexiglass mounting panel works relatively well. Let me just show you a picture of that. Um, let 
Can you guys see my screen? Not yet. Uh, sure it is. Okay. Um, if you could, uh, this is on my personal Facebook. That's how the control panel looks like on the frame. It's pretty neat. It looks nice and clean, uh, relatively tight. Everything is just uh, little through holes that are drilled with a drill and using cable ties. Four inch cable ties work really well. It looks pretty neat. So right now that's mount including the plexiglass being cable tied to frame itself through tiny holes drilled in the metal frame. And that's quite workable and relatively easy to drill with a hand drill through frame. Um, that's one option. It's not covered, but the idea is like, for example, I had to replace the the RAM sword. Well, the cool thing about this is I, I, it takes like one minute to do that. You don't have to take apart any, anything. Um, so something that, like, for example, if you have a... Well, actually, in the Lulzbot Mini that I have here, I, I think the board went bad. and But to, to extract it is a lot of effort. It probably takes about, I don't know, like half an hour perhaps, and you gotta have a bunch of tools. Here, I do like the idea of the transparent, naked design. Um, it is a good, I think, good for serviceability, and maybe for other versions, we might wanna make it more enclosed, but for serviceability, this definitely is good. And then we can clearly put a, a cover on this as well, uh, perhaps even just another plexiglass cover that could be cut with a Cincy Cirque, uh, Cincy small laser cutter that we can also make on a DCD frame. So if you use this 10th inch, I'm using their 10th ten, inch plexiglass, imagine that being cut by the 3D small laser cutter and that being a ready mounting box for all electronics. So you could even make that a transparent enclosure that just comes right on and off. Uh, so that's one way to go, but we can talk about different, more dedicated ways to do the enclosures. Um, yeah, that's, that's helpful and interesting. Um, yeah. So the, the metal box is the, the power supply. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the back. Arduinos, is there an issue of them uh, running hot? No. This At this, okay. no, not, not as it is. It's just small, just small separate motors that we're driving. Uh, so that's not an issue. No fan heating is required at this stage yet. We go to larger machines probably, but not at this point. Um, yeah, so that's, this is one to go. I mean, it could be a good quick prototype um, for how to do it. At least on the current circuit mill that we're building, that's the current plan. It's a, it's a way to organize everything neatly without, minus the LCD. We don't don't use the LCD on a circuit mill yet so um, basically power supply and the, and the drivers and little uh, relay that's needed yeah yeah thank you um, so I'll uh, start a page and we can try to document how um, the, what the options are for mounting the Arduino and the other components yep excellent and about starting new projects upon Ruslan's request there's a video Put up, put up a little video on how do you start new projects. So that's explaining the development template and the specific instructions for embedding that in a wiki. So you can take a look at that. That's on page six of the working doc here. All right, Ruslan, do you have anything uh, to add to this? Fine, fun day. Yes. Okay. Um, and just to wrap up, Eric, is is that everything on your side or anything else to wrap up? I'm also. Awesome. Okay, sounds good, Eric. Ruslan, go ahead then. Okay, I, I started the development of uh, the Gmenta, and um, Oliver provided uh, the uh, fake files for for frame mm -hmm. and uh, parts for for axis. Uh, I was able to to put to axis uh, um, to the frame. Mm -hmm. I have a pretty, pretty big uh, FreeCAD file that I cannot uh, down, uh, upload to our wiki. Wiki right. uh, it says uh, the file is too large. Yeah, can you upload it to your your Git instance 
and just uh, put a link on the wiki. Okay, I, I will. I will do it. Now I I will try to find out what uh, what kind of repository I will use for it uh, because I think about uh, uh, alternative to mm -hmm. uh, GitHub. I already have a um, GitLab account and Bitbucket, but uh, I want also to check uh, if I will use uh, uh, the repository provided by Open Source Ecology Germany. Okay. And then when when this things is uh, is, uh, is fixed, and uh, I will have a repository, then I will follow your suggestion and add uh, add the link uh, to the cat file. <clears throat> yeah. I put a little screenshot, uh, then you can see uh, my progress. I had some troubles to move things around when uh, a lot of things in FreeCAD, mm -hmm. but uh, it's um, also because I have not that much experience in FreeCAD. Yeah, uh, that's where file simplification, um, if you need, there's a page called File Simplification on the Wiki. And it tells you about how to how to simple how to convert file size, just reduce file size by simplifying the files. Um, let's see. There, there's a. If you'll take a look at that, I'll just paste that into the chat box. There, take a look at that. Just, uh, if you do want to work quickly with large files, like if you have all the details, it'll, FreeCAD will get slow, just like any software will get slow after some time. Especially if you have friends, so do the file simplification. Uh, question on okay. the 2020 profile, is that the link in your BOM? Is that what you're getting, or have you gotten that already? 2020 profile? Mm -hmm. The aluminum? Um, I did. There is a link in my uh, BOM. Yeah, and I'm looking at that. Is that what you're actually getting? Uh, probably. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Least, it's 3.6. Yeah, 3.6 euros per meter. That's pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, they will cut them in, in pieces when I uh, yeah. the order. Right. And you're making a version yes. that's that's for an eight inch bed, correct? Um, no, they are, um, I took the dimensions from Oliver, and uh, he says uh, that this kind uh, of frame, I enlarged the frame um, after my previous uh, draft. Mm -hmm. This version, which is uh, on my screenshot, mm -hmm. will be able to print the uh, it is Sentiata Cube. It's high and uh, length. Uh-huh. Now what the, you need is the same stretch unit. Right. Okay. And uh, up, it's 12 this inches. Uh, uh, about 12 inches. You think you're ready for that? That's pretty good. good. Okay. That's good. Are you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, uh, uh, Oliver had some, uh, um, some more experience and he already built the frame, as far as I know. Uh -huh. And he said that just uh, uh, make the, the cube a little bit higher mm -hmm. costs uh, one euro something or two euro. Maybe this is three dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, all the other parts maybe also need to, to be stretched, but uh, I think uh, it is it is not a big deal. Yeah. Um, now, did, does he have we... have one of these actually running as a three D printer? Um, I'm not sure, but he has a frame. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And he also helped me but to find out the way I can uh, buy stepper motors. Yeah. Uh, he mm -hmm. help, he helps a lot. Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's good. 
Now, I would suggest, if you can, uh, to make things easier for code interchangeability, follow the geometry that's on the current build, as in the picture that I, I put in. Like, if you look at, I put a lot of very detailed pictures of the build on Facebook. Uh, it's actually a convenient way to document, because you can just upload straight away from the cell phone. Uh, but note the geometry of where x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis are, and essentially, if you're looking from the front of the machine, the y motors are towards the rear, and the x motor is on the left, facing the, the rear. Uh, yeah. uh, I took a uh, different uh, Ohio version and placed the, right. uh, the motors the same way. Let's let's see how D three D Ohio is looking. That should be um, should be the correct orientation. It's just so that everyone has a uniform uh, orientation, which makes it easier to. Uh, yes, it's also easier for me uh, not to think much about it. That's right. And just um, um, use the previous time to walk. Uh, maybe I put right. Um, I, I have a link. I will post it. Did you get the, uh, the link? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. Um, right, I'm looking at that. Yeah, well, not exactly. Um, okay. D3, let's look at D3 frame. It's actually what I'm looking at specifically now. It's not not what I have. Um, in other words, it'd be, you'd have to mess around with the... Yeah, actually it'll get tricky. You have to end up going into Marlin to make little corrections. But um, D3D controller. Okay, it's a page called D3D controller. And on it... Um, I will post the link to the picture. Is it wrong? Yeah, yeah it's actually not, not right. Uh, so much work. Really? Okay, I can, I can, I can see it. No, I like can... ex exercise for a cat. Well, I mean, flipping the axes shouldn't be a big deal. <laughs> Should be the, the, the oh. first word is uh, the problem here with Freecat. Should not. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm looking at this. That's actually. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I do have a better reference. Right. So. Okay. So if you look at D3D controller, so there oh. is that's documented there. So I just uh, typed in the deal. So okay. The what what it says there, and that's where we try to make it uniform. So there's left, right, back, and front. Okay. Oh man, and that's and that's not really right there either for the Z, but for the X and Y that is correct. So X motor is on the left side. Facing the Y1 motor, okay, and Y1 motor is at the left back side. Y2 motor is at the right. I cannot, back. I cannot process uh, the position information in foreign language in this suite. I just look the picture and yeah. sorry, this is my disability. No, no that's you can look at that. So if you look at that picture, that's uh, that. Yes. You're just reading the words on what's there. It's the arrows are pointing to the Y axis and to the um, and the x-axis is in, in between the y-axis, but it's follow exactly what it says there. Uh, does uh, front point to and the front is the kind of front. Uh, yeah, the front is the operator where you're looking at it, and that's pointing to okay. you. are looking at it. This would be uh, x-axis in Phuket. The front? Yes. No. Uh, the y axis, the, the direction from front to back is y. It's like a Cartesian system. So if you're looking at a Cartesian system, the x goes left to right. right okay, to left. okay. Yeah. Uh, I see, I agree. Yeah. 
So following the convention of a Cartesian system, and you're looking at it from the front. So that's the idea. But actually, you know, thinking about that... Um, I'm a mathematician. I can imagine very crazy Cartesian systems. Wow. <laughs> you understood that right away. Um, now, the in the document itself, the only change is the Z motors have... To, um, you want them facing up like in Jonathan's. So I'm going to change that like right now here so we confuse less people. So, you know, you know, see, you see how that's uh, not... I think I need only an example which is completely correct. This would be great. That would be really great. Uh, and I think the first person that's going to do it is, is going to be rewarded greatly. Um, Okay, but we have a version like the versions we have there. We always, um, we still have not updated this, but the idea is a Z motor. The Z motor is actually at the top because it allows you to get more space, uh, more space out of the vertical axis. So that's what we learned. So the Z motor is at the top. Um, and I'm going to try to change that right now. It's wrong in the picture. So I, I just need to, if you take a look at the pictures from the current build, which is all blast all over Facebook in this document, that is correct there. Okay, wait, that is the official. That's how. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the code we've written in terms of Marlin said nobody has to mess with the axis orientation. That's already correct in all the code. So that's one less thing we're gonna have to worry about. Is it the picture on your Facebook, which is? Transparent? Yes. Yes. Okay. My, uh, how can I make uh, my cricket uh, drawing to look like this? Um, the picture. Right click on the on the object you want to make transparent. Hey guys, I have to head out. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you need me for? This is really informative, so I no, appreciate this first meeting. Yeah. No, that's that's cool. You're, you're good to go, so we're going to just continue finish up the meeting. So, Spencer, thanks. Okay. Yep. <laughs> thanks. Have a great rest of your happy 4th of July. Okay. And all that. So. Yeah, thank you. That was a great experiment that happened on the date. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yep, yeah, see you then. Um, so the link in current working document is uh, that's that's the build that you can trace every single step and, and if you trace okay. the build procedure it's it can be quite helpful because that's the actual most effective way build building one axis at a time I think because what is happening is once you start fitting everything to the frame you're gonna see oh you have to make all these little adjustments so it's easy I found it to be actually easier to make the adjustments on the fly. Um, uh, there's, you have to, at the end of the day, adjust the final belt lengths and, and axis length by sliding the rods in and out very slightly. Um, so I, do, I would suggest when you're building that, do follow, or at least take a look at what I have on Facebook. There are a bunch of posts about that. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm going to I'm looking now at... Uh, the photography, this, this is the correct one. Oh, the photograph in slide 7? Uh, you, you just uh, shared your screen. Um, no, this one, I, the Ohio? I, I, not the other one. This one here, the... Yes, yes. This one. That this is, is correct. correct on X and Y, and the Z motors are at the top. Ah, okay, uh, they, they should be on the top. Okay. Yeah. Because that allows the, the bed to go further down, allowing more print space. It'll work with the motors down, and it won't. You won't have to change anything in the code, either. But uh, it's not very efficient. It's a uh, yeah. waste of space. Uh, waste of space. Waste uh, of space. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That sounds good. Uh, I think you're on your way. 
if you yeah as you go along keep doing the CAD and uh, the extruder that I would recommend is have you thought about which extruder you would use because uh, right now uh, but uh, uh, go on. Uh, right now if you see the pictures on Facebook uh, we're working with Prusa i3 MK2 modified version for our for our with a uh, with a magnetic mount. That seems to be the best option right now, given that the the Titan Aero extruder is still not designed with a proper fan, so that doesn't have a fan on it. We can mount it as is, but we need a cooling fan. So the one that does everything has everything and is complete is the Prusa i3 MK2, and it's made of um, three printed parts. that uh, you'd need to get your hands on if you're doing that. If you get, that's, uh, that's, that's going to be the block there. Uh, but do you have access to 3D printing? Hopefully with uh, the printer you got, right? Uh, yes. yes. And uh, also other um, developer from OSA Germany uh, will help me for sure. Excellent. Excellent. So you can print yourself uh, the modified Prusa i3 MK2, which has got the big 8 millimeter distance sensing sensor. Uh, and that's documented on the, under D3D extruder. So that sh there shouldn't be any controversy there. Um, Yep. Okay. Uh, so I have some questions. Yep, go ahead. Um, in your video, you said uh, how to name. Yep. Uh, name those properly, and then yeah. uh, after you stress once more, then we need to, to follow particular convention. Yeah. And uh, I look at other uh, documents and also my, for, for example, I put up my slide. A slide then. Uh, uh huh. Then they. Uh, yep. We uh, see the first point how still are the naming rules. Should I go to D three D or three D printer? Should I write V eight point? Yeah. Uh, six point five or without yeah, points? Yeah. How still to be able to have this? Yeah. So. Uh, for the longevity of the project, you, you want to go with same names that are found on the GVCS page, which lists the 50 different machines. That way, someone new to this, without knowing that we're calling the 3D printer D3D, can actually find it. Okay. Now, the, the deal is, if you call it D3D printer, uh, we can simply put a, a, a link to the so-called official page, which would be 3D printer. So you want this the answer is you want 3d printer and if we do write d3d v so and so forth we would want to redirect so number sign redirect that page so that whichever you do you still can find it as okay far as uh, uh, between the, uh, yes yeah yes that doesn't hurt that uh, that's good i i would do that um I would just do that since that's how we've been doing it so far. Um, does that hurt any? Uh, it, it does help separate them. It, it looks more transparent than a longer number. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. I'm asking it because uh, sometimes uh, the naming in uh, programming is pretty strict. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, that's why I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. To know the advantages. Oh, okay. No, do the dots. It's more human readable. This yes. And uh, I also noticed uh, that uh, some document, some documents are not just uh, very hierarchical, but a large flat file, which I find also has uh, some advantages. Do you want to have separate file 
files for all the parts which which are listed in the development templates. Uh, now now, uh, if you click on on, on the link I provide on my slide, then you see you have a, a, a flat version. You have a little bit information to each chap, uh, to each section. But but in the video which you um, pu uh, published in, on YouTube, uh, you use uh, separate files. Separate files. Um, or separate pages. This separate pages, to... right. The idea is that if you have full documentation of the 20 items, it might get very long on a single page. That's why once you have enough content, it's easy, to, it's useful to break into separate pages. Okay, and this is uh, the procedure I should follow. First, to collect everything in a single one. Yeah. And when it, it becomes uh, too long, then I can um, ex uh, separate it uh, into a a different uh, into a separate document okay right and you can reflect the link to be correct accordingly in your development template mm -hmm. yep uh, i try to, to put similar not uh makes sense not uh, just uh, the button plus the version because i i think no i look how better people did it yeah. Okay. Yep. Any uh, other questions? Uh, uh, other questions? Uh, a different topic we, we talk. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that sounds good. Um, let's see. And I think that's that's uh, it. Let's see. Uh, questions. That's my my questions. I uh -huh. didn't, August emerged. I didn't. Let's see. So for questions, who asked about August immersion? What, what's the question? I, I, all the questions are for me. Uh -huh. What's yeah. the question um, on August immersion? You mentioned something, the uh, deadline, 1st August and immersion. Ah, yes. I That's was correct. not able to, to understand what. Yeah, what's... yeah. Uh, so the immersion program starts on, on August 25th and the application deadline for anyone who wants to sign up for the immersion is, is August 1st. That's that's what I'm saying. Ah, deadline. Yeah, application deadline because we gotta uh, do some due diligence. Let's see on the solar box components calculation, induction, and so on efficiency. BS. You uh, you said that we were that, that you want to put as much um, as possible to software. Yeah, and it, uh, it looks like a simple circuit. Mm -hmm. um, I am not uh, this area, but I think uh, there are some uh, uh, companies which cannot uh, do with software. Right. The power parts, and right. for the sake of efficiency, you need to. Uh, you cannot just put, for example, uh, any, any capacitor or any in that induction. Uh, to the circuit, you need to calculate uh, the uh, the properties. Right. So there are some restrictions. There are restrictions. What I was referring to more is, for example, you could have um, a good example where the the software makes sense to replace a large number of components. Is, for example, a control panel. You can have a control panel with some kind of a screen a bunch of buttons like 10 20 buttons uh -huh. or you can do an arduino with a touch 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 interface whereby you've replaced perhaps 10 to 100 parts with this inter with this touch stone touch um touch screen so that's example is what I mean. Oh. And of course, you can't do that for other components like the power elements. You can't simulate them in code. Um, but other things that you can do readily with the microcontroller, we should. Does that make sense? Um, no, yes, I just 
didn't thought about I didn't think about it. Thank you for clarification. Yeah, and that's that requires some strategic thinking. But the first thing I saw about Libre Solar, Libre Solar, was that hmm, we've got all these things there. Then um, we should probably make them. Yeah, probably pack more of that into the software. Because I, I think uh, I saw something. I forget exactly what it was, but I saw things that um, and, and stuff. For example, making a circuit for like. I, I don't know, like a timer or something. That's something easily impl implementable within software. You know, things like that. Um, when we talk about an embedded timer, I think there's some restrictions. Uh, um, uh, this is uh, my circulation. I'm not sure how to work on maybe Michelle can, can um, join the conversation and uh, say something about it. But uh, I think the kind of um, separate mass reacts very fast to to changes. That's why we we need some um, uh, hardware uh, yeah, properties to to run a real time operation system yeah. and also to to react to ex external um, right interface between the components. So for now. Uh, Michelle, can you speak up? We can hardly hear you. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's better? Uh, yeah, yeah, speak up. That's better. Um, yeah, I'd like to say something in the restrictions in the So in the case between the components, microcontroller also lost sets of power components. So here we got the power interface and the frequency to control. Yeah, yeah, it's something you have to analyze in detail. But the idea is that um, I think I actually wrote up a, a basic comment on that. Let me pull this up from a log, and maybe you guys can continue editing that. Um, electronics. Yeah, it's really architecture. What's what kind of um, architecture? So yeah, if you look at this uh, wiki page called Power Electronics Architecture, I just put a couple of points on that. So if you want to take a look at, see that link. I just made, uh, just comment on that. That's how, if you want to create a whole product ecology based on the global village instruction set, because the idea there is we're, we're creating, uh, you know, the world's first self-contained entire civilization in a box kind of deal where Think about like a shipping container or so can can embody the entire civ civilization's technosphere. So for yeah. for doing that, you have to get very radical on how you simplify things to use uh, to do more things with less. And those four points I, I put for the power electronics architecture reflect some of that thinking. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's the separate parts so there in general, so in detail we have to analyze it. So for yeah. this leaf was on our PCB, like the idea of the Arduino, then this would be the one that wouldn't work with the Arduino because of the control frequency. I don't know if this. Right. Okay, I don't think I need to analyze it. So you can also see the, 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 the PCB side, and it's, it's not up. So we got the uh, communication interface, the microcontroller control interface. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. I think we're on a similar page on that, and we'd have to look at the details of how to make it as modular as possible. So this will be a general quick question from my side. How is it with the collaboration with universities? So do you have a tool where you get some professors to do it all that they can evaluate in this field? Because this is also one thing I try to build up because you have professors in school where we can, uh, let's say, push, we can uh, just 
Shopping cart attack on the front and launch into a knock them and they can take kind of serious to us to the list and that keeps us in the heart. Something like this. Do you have some universities? I saw I saw just some I don't know, the MIT but the but the Massachusetts but the Michigan yes, right? We have good connections with Michigan Tech University. That's where Shane is, for example, and that's where Dr. Joshua Pierce, who's a leader in the open source hardware movement, he's there. Uh, it really takes that somebody's really a strong stakeholder on on open source hardware, which is somewhat rare. Um, but the thing we can do is maybe uh, maybe we can collaborate on a just just an architecture document or, or just I'm saying try to put together a common common document of what what we're all trying to accomplish and yeah with which is basically which form basically a project specification like hey so you can there will be a proposal for working on that for various master's theses or other school projects um, so that's doable it would take some energy to organize that but the thing that we can have it's not ready for my house so you have to use the but there's not a standard like process behind it where you can uh, call it announce your projects so you can uh, no it's there's no we don't have standard process for that right now it's um we don't have that kind of infrastructure right now because I think this is what was also very good to hear a process behind the university <coughs> can collaborate in, in an easy way and also all participants could uh, bring in their, their development request for the request, so to say. And uh, yeah, also to, to, to filter it in, in different in different knowledge, how do you say? Yeah, my English is not so good, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it's worthwhile to to create a process like that. I think we can start that by describing what we have and its status and and just a simple document that if if anyone does ask us about it, then we can say, hey, we've got these opportunities. This is what we're working on. I think just showing the transparency of what what we're working on and what the next problem statements are, like like roadmaps, just simple documents like that would help a lot. Um, but other than that, it's like, you know, that would be a whole, you know, whole other full-time position or organization that could do that. And um, I found it's not that transparent or easy to do that. I mean, we've had contact with many, many different professors, but um, I think it's really about, you know, constraints of what a specific project, you know, what a specific university does or how it works, how the classes work. Right, right. So some kind of a description, like basically a project pitch. That's something we could we could put together and say, hey, announcing school projects. We need uh -huh. such and such to be done, and maybe like show show specific action points that we're working on um, but it does require a bit of management to do that um, okay. so we have, we, have, we, have, we have some ideas we can give for the feedback uh, so let's uh, yeah let's we can uh, do, do you guys have that documented anywhere like uh, no we just had uh, uh, we got an issue where I tried to put in some some um, uh, yeah, some some tasks from our side where we thought about we could we could do this as a as a request for universities. But it's in German unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, at least with us, we're we're starting some collaboration, and and we're continuously connected to Michigan Tech University, um, so uh, we can at least start with us. Okay. And electronic fields. Uh, institutions. Sorry. Say it again. Electronic fields. 
is also the, the, the tech university you say in Michigan the university are also in electronic software you know more in the mechanical field. Uh, they've got everything there. That's okay. great. The Google University has uh, many different ones. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. They do pretty much everything. Um, software, uh, focusing on hardware, but they do some software. So they also make the nice and make transparent how the collaboration starts itself. Is it not a on the personal way or? Yeah, I mean, I would suggest like first thing is to document that summer, like so it's not, you know, like set up some venue where we're, you know, you know, start a wiki page, start something where we actually start throwing down ideas that everyone can contribute to. So what would be that? I mean, that would be a start. I mean, can you guys use our wiki on that or some some wiki or some public forum to that's openly accessible? In other words, where do we want to do this? Start writing down the notes on this and how to go forward. Yes, yeah, so if you're writing down on the wiki, yeah, sure, we can also... We can yeah, I can start a page on this on a wiki and, and pass this on to you guys, but um, pro, like basically, you know, there's we have a lot of different pages on wiki, like active projects or critical path and this and that, but... Uh, we can start something that's specific for okay university projects student projects or whatever we we should do that so let's start that i'll, I'll start that and we can start from down ideas and and specific pages to start fleshing out uh, different things that we can work on or or, or that are projects for specific uh, students yeah right right and then using of course part libraries and common tools that critical so ecad free cad yep yep yeah that sounds good so yeah we'll, we'll start we can start that on the wiki and, and see what it goes um, and of course it would i mean really to uh, so i would emphasize that some of these products the way that we can make them grow quite a bit is when when they're productized there's a product behind something like like for example for our brick press or our houses i mean at some point there's going to have to be an enterprise that runs that, like with it, what we're trying to do with a 3D printer, that now we have energy. We have money coming in, there's revenue, and then there's energy to start other collaborations, uh, getting students involved, like at elementary schools and high schools, colleges, and so forth. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a big organizational question, but we, we can start with uh, documenting some of that on... On the key or elsewhere, and I see you got the collaborations. Mm -hmm. so just start off the, the proposal for us, uh, okay. Uh, and what is that? What is that platform there? That's um. Uh, that's, that's a platform from the technical university in Hamburg. Yeah. Yeah. Is that openly editable or do I need to be part of TUHH?
normally you have to be in this university. Okay, try. And just apply for an account, see if it takes me there, but. Hmm. So that's GitLab. That's GitLab, yeah. So also keep this. And this is also one thing that I experienced here is really just all these platforms, all this. Yeah. It's really hard to get one, one simple pool <laughs> so, because there are so much platforms. Yeah. No, you know what? Like the answer, what I say to that question is, I don't think so. Wikipedia has already done it, and that's called a wiki, and you can embed anything on a wiki. So I would say, like, let's not forget about wikis. I think that's the most powerful tool in the world right now for collaboration. Um, that's why it's you know just start start some work on it I think a lot of work can happen when people start programming for the wiki in terms of getting custom embed code and templates and all kinds of crazy content especially with like semantic media wiki extensions I mean wiki is extremely powerful but you have to make it do what you want and I think that's a universal tool that's very very scalable so um, definitely a, a, uh, I, I, I'm a great fan of the wiki, as you, you see us doing, and media wiki is, uh, or Wikipedia is, one of the top sites in the world. So that's proven technology. Uh, but it's missing the collaborative literacy, though. It's like it's people have to understand that that's a public tool, how to use it, and so forth. So that's, I think, a lot of the barriers are cultural, you know. Yeah. Like, for example... Yeah, yeah, it's it's really about being a cultural understanding, like getting some protocols and and some things in order. But I mean, that's that's a big task because it's really about reculturing a whole bunch of people about how to collaborate. Like for example, one of the challenges with with the universities is um, you know just like you know say we say see here, okay, you guys have GitLab. Everyone's got like a different tool that they use, you know, and that's an issue. That's why just degenerate to one tool like a wiki like you know, s select select one thing and just go with it that that, that would have to happen for uh um, yeah this is now skip keyboard select one click and just follow it I, i'm talking about the trick system you like that that's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah everyone use that trick system yeah let's it's just from now on except when we just, can't Okay. Um, uh, another question? Yeah. Uh, take a minute. Yep. Um, we, we talk about circuit view. And I, I wonder if, um, what about VRs? Do, do we use it for, um, for solar box? What are we uh, yeah, the, Those, as far as I know, maybe I'm wrong, there are connections between layers. There are through hole, there are holes with the uh, yeah, pipes, little pipes from from copper through holes. Yeah. And okay. uh, I think you cannot do it with a circuit mill. Yeah, you can. And you do, can. And do we have them in us? Uh, do we have these things in the uh, because we cannot use a circuit mill to as it is no i mean as it is right now we can't use the circuit mill to do what they do they're too similar features i think are too small 
but we can modify the board and then we can do through holes in our in our system so that wouldn't be a problem but as long as we have it in keycad you know maybe maybe we'll do it this weekend maybe uh, we have the circuit mill workshop we'll take that board and maybe start rearranging it in keycad so we can make it make it millable with our uh, circuit mill and the good thing is we already have a keycad file right so we can start modifying it yeah uh, I have a um, comment. Mm -hmm. I referred to the last video. Last time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you talked about how uh, how to make uh, you know, wiring and free cut. Yeah. What we talked about and whether we should use um, Flamingo and mm -hmm. so on for it. And there is a solution. There is. Uh, how to do wiring in FreeCAD. I spoke with a, with a guy who, uh, who make uh, robots, industrial robots for living. Uh -huh. um, Is that guy open source? Uh, no, unfortunately no. Mm -hmm. But still he shares his experience with me and with us. And the solution is not to do cable work in FreeCAD. They don't do it. Where do they do it? You use, uh, they use a, uh, they use CAD software to do me mechanical parts, and uh, for cable they have a other method. Uh, uh, it's not a part of uh, CAD. What is that method? Uh, 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 I cannot say precisely. But, uh, they have different lists. Uh, what what cable? Uh, uh, which is just a list with properties of cables. But they, they are not part of a uh, cut yeah. uh, picture. Okay. And uh, so you also should not uh, so waste time for time to, to make cables and forget. He says it is a very compli uh, complicated tool. Yeah, but I mean, but just take a look at that. Just because it's hard to do doesn't mean we sh we shouldn't do it. Because um, no, let's say uh, uh, let's use experience of other people and they uh, try uh, try to do uh, as efficient as possible, and they do uh, they make dust robots, which it's um, not just a little hobby projects. And I think uh, they have some ideas. It doesn't mean that they are there, but uh, just imagine how hard it is it not to connect uh, a couple of pipes in FreeCAD and put a stepper on the right place. And uh, then trying to, to make wiring there to maybe it, it will consume a lot of resources. Right. The useful thing about wiring that's spelled out for people is that then a novice can can take a look at that and parse it more easily in that sense it would be useful as far as the practicality of that that's that's another question uh, it would be good that's i would say it would be good in general if, if that could be possible at some point and right now it's really that it's not that easy you see the even in a professional environment, they don't do it, and they have maybe more complex. Okay, okay, but let me stop you right there and and uh, expose an assumption that you have. The professional okay. environment is not a place where they focus on on documentation or teaching people to do things transparently. They focus on providing information to other specialists who then understand. But that's not what we do here. Here we're trying to say. Yeah, and here what we're trying to do is saying, okay, we're going to make this transparent for everybody. So we have to go an extra length to do it. So we may not be able to do it right now. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to be able to do it because clearly it would make it easier for novice to be able to understand the whole picture. Like you don't want to go to, you know, you have a one picture and then you need to like, hundred other documents to provide all the information you know there's a lot of information that's required for anything if you can communicate it with um, more with pictures I mean there's definitely people that they're very pictorial learn well visually 
if you can add that into your CAD, that would definitely help those people. And that's certainly not what the, the current professionals want to do. They, in fact, want to hide that information so nobody can replicate it. So that's part of the reason why they're very much not, may not be interested in as much as we are. No, uh, they, uh, they don't try to do it uh, to hide because uh, they need to understand each other within a company. Right. But I agree, they, they are professionals. This right. is... Um, um, uh, this is a valid point. I agree, but um, not not bad. We, we need to take account that uh, for me uh, the uh, the topic uh, to draw a three-dimensional table is uh, appears to be complicated. It is. It Compa is. That's why it compared to it. to just saying here to this cable to this place and another part to this place and the right. length of the cable is uh, this and that. And we have a list with the lines, with the colors, and we maybe as an um, uh, intermediate solution or the, the optimal solution need to mark uh, um, inputs and outputs on the uh, free cast and you don't need to draw the, uh, to draw cables themselves. Right, that's that's an easy way to do it. And that's what we have currently in the, in the development template. There's wiring diagrams, there's cut lists. So for example, in a cut list, you can put the length of a cable, like so you're preparing all the cables. Oh, okay. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, thank you for, for your comments. Yep. Um, okay. So I think... Um, I think that's about it. So let's wrap up here. Uh, so I'm glad about <clears throat> the current little developments on some further collaboration with OSC Germany. I think that's that's really good. Uh, it's definitely a big challenge to get a lot of people coordinated around a big development project. So you know this is not not easy. But we can certainly take ways. You know, start trying to coordinate in a in a better way. Um, yeah. So. We'll, uh, I think we can quit here then, and thanks everybody. Next meeting then next Tuesday, and as I mentioned before, feel free to invite other people who, do, who can make valuable contributions to the team, like you know, people from other projects, other open source projects, that we can have uh, chime in and collaborate with us more, just like we had today with Grace Solar and Michelle, and then Spencer from Chicago. So, yeah, well, thanks everybody. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.